Hey everybody! Today's practice problem comes from Principles of Microeconomics, 6th edition, by N. Gregory Mankiw. Today we're going to be doing chapter 10, problem number 2. This question is pretty straightforward. It just says, do you agree with the following statements? Why or why not? And the first statement reads, the benefits of corrective taxes as a way to reduce pollution have to be weighed against the deadweight losses that these taxes cause. So let's think about how to analyze that. And to start analyzing this, let's just think about drawing our market that's you know, causing this pollution and thinking about various quantities that are associated with this market. So let's just start by drawing a typical looking supply curve and a typical looking demand curve. And remember we said when well, always, when we, regardless of whether or not we're specifically talking about externalities, actually, that the supply curve represents marginal private cost to the producer, and the demand curve represents marginal private benefit to the consumer. So let's say here that there was a negative externality on production. Usually we're polluting when we're producing something, not when we're consuming it. You know, cigarettes being one exception to that, for example. But usually we have pollution is a negative externality on production. And we can say in that case that when we have a negative externality on production, the social cost of producing the item is greater than the private cost of the firm. And we see a curve for marginal social cost, called MSC, that's higher, that's above the regular supply curve by the per unit amount of the externality. So for example, if the pollution was estimated to be you know, $1.50 cost to society per unit of output produced, meaning not per ton of pollution, but per, you know, per widget that the company is making, then this E would be $1.50, and so on and so forth. So we have this situation here. And then we say that we have our free market quantity, because our free market doesn't care about the externality, which is why externalities are a problem, right? That I can call this Q star sub MKT for market. My socially optimal quantity would be where I'm only producing up until the point where marginal social cost equals marginal social benefit, right? Well, notice marginal social benefit is still given by this demand curve because there's no externality on consumption that I told you about at least. So you have marginal social benefit here, marginal social cost here. So your societally optimal quantity, call this Q star sub OPT, is this quantity here. And we're being asked to think about the benefits of corrective taxes as a way to reduce pollution have to be weighed against the deadweight losses that these taxes cause. So the benefits from putting a corrective tax or a Pergovian tax in place are that you're getting society to actually internalize this externality, right? That you're getting them to think about the costs and benefits to society of their actions and not only just their private costs and benefits. So we can think about here, again, there's a helpful concept, I'll put it over here, where we can say total cost of the externality. Notice when we have a negative externality, it's going to be total cost of the externality. If we had a positive externality, this would be the total benefit of the externality. The, the total cost of the externality is just saying, how much damage is this? market doing to onlookers, people who are not actually participating in the market, but people who are being affected by the pollution created, right? And we can say, well, this is going to be equal to the per unit cost of the externality, which is just E, times the quantity of stuff that's actually being bought and sold. So we could say here, in a free market, this is going to be the cost of the externality per unit times the free market quantity, right, this guy here. 
And if we were to put a corrective tax in place, the total cost of the externality would still be you know, the same per unit cost of the externality. But now, we would have a different Q star. right? And the whole point of the corrective tax is that we would actually get to this socially optimal quantity if our tax was perfectly internalizing the externality. So we could say that with the corrective tax, this is going to be E times Q star sub OPT. So far, so good. So if we think about this graphically, basically what we're going to have is this. In the free market, the total cost of the externality is this whole thing here. So notice we're between the two supply curves and out to this market quantity that we get this parallelogram here. We get a parallelogram because guess what? The area of a parallelogram, that's not a parallelogram, but you get the point hopefully, is actually still like a rectangle, just length times width. But what you have to keep in mind is that say this is length, then width is the thing that's actually perpendicular to it. Okay. So here, we can see that this vertical distance is just E, the per unit cost of the externality, and the horizontal distance is this market quantity, right? And if I were to do this, I could put letters. I could say A, B, C. And I could say that the total cost of the externality in the free market, in this case, is A plus B plus C. Once I put the corrective tax in place, the total cost of the externality, it's still a parallelogram, but now it stops here. So after this corrective tax, the cost of the externality is just A. So if I were to think about the reduction in cost, the reduction in cost was area B plus C, right? And coming back to this, it says the benefits of corrective taxes is a way to reduce pollution. Well, the benefits of the corrective taxes is exactly this, that we've reduced the cost to society of the externality, and we've reduced that cost by amount B plus C here. And again, it says, have to be weighed against the deadweight losses that the taxes cause. So it's not all of a sudden the case that, you know, overall, the deadweight loss magically goes away. What's actually happening when we say that when we put a corrective tax in place, we're raising social welfare rather than lowering it, is due, you know, what we're essentially saying is that this reduction in cost here actually outweighs the deadweight loss to consumers and producers in the market that's created by the tax. Let's see how that works. So in our free market, consumers and producers were conducting economic activity up to this Q star sub MKT here, right? So when the tax was put in place, the tax was actually an incentive to curb activity back to this Q star sub OPT. So we can think about what's happening to the private benefits and the private costs of producers and consumers, right? So here, in the market, producers and consumers were, con were conducting activity up until the point where the private benefits to consumers equaled the private costs to producers, right? Once the tax is put in place, and we could think about, you know, if you wanted to, the tax diagram would look pretty similar to what we saw before. That you would see this, you would see the tax wedge, that this would be the tax wedge, and so on and so forth, right? You can think about what part of this looks exactly like your tax diagram. And what you're seeing is that we're preventing some transactions that when we consider only the universe of producers and consumers actually made them happier, right? 
that we're preventing transactions in this region here, and we're preventing, the tax is preventing transactions where the private benefit to the consumer was actually greater than the private cost to the producer. So we still have some sort of quote unquote deadweight loss to producers and consumers themselves. And just like we saw in our tax diagrams before, that's gonna be this area B, because this is the region where the benefits to consumers outweigh the cost to producers, but that those units aren't being produced and consumed because of the tax. So we could say that the, you know, I'm putting deadweight loss in quotes because it's not an overall deadweight loss in the market, but we do have this deadweight loss from the tax or this distortion in the amount B, right? But what we see is that this amount B is less than the reduction in cost of the externality once we reduced the quantity being produced and consumed. So we can say that the net benefit overall is equal to area C. So it's not the case that, you know, this market distortion or this deadweight loss from the tax all of a sudden like magically doesn't factor in anymore. It's just that what we traditionally think about as deadweight loss from a tax is outweighed by the reduction in the cost of the externality. That we say, yeah, 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 consumers and producers are worse off in some way, but the benefits to society outweigh the amount by which consumers and producers themselves are worse off. And actually it outweighs by the amount C here. And if you come back and look at this, you can see that putting this corrective tax in place makes society better off by amount C. So interestingly enough, if we look at what this represents, we can see that C is actually the deadweight loss that's associated with the free market when we have this negative externality. The second part of the question just asks if we agree or disagree with the following statement. When deciding whether to levy a corrective tax on consumers or producers, the government should be careful to levy the tax on the side of the market generating the externality. Well, this one, if we've paid attention so far to our economics classes, we should actually probably disagree with, right? Because one of the fundamental things that we learned about taxation is that we get to the same endpoint in terms of market quantity produced and consumed, price to the consumer, price to the producer, and so on and so forth regardless of whether we put a tax on producers or a tax on consumers. So if taxing either one of those groups gets us to the same place, then it stands to reason that both of those approaches should also internalize the externality in the same way. So actually it shouldn't matter whether we tax producers or consumers. You know, in this case here, we should be able to get to this socially optimal outcome either by taxing producers, which is sort of what we're suggesting here when we're shifting the supply curve, or by taxing consumers, simply because both of those approaches would get us to this same market outcome here.